The hardest part about any job is getting started, and that doesn't matter if it's DIY, if it's cooking, or even if it's gardening. And the part about getting started is to make sure that you are organized. You know, if you got all your stuff ready there, boy, you just get in, get it, and go. By the time you found the extension cord, you found the, the garden fork, or the rake, and you've had to go all over to look for it, you are over it. And you and I are exactly the same. That's why on my list, is a tool organizer. Come with me and I'll show you how to get it right. Okay guys, so this is what we're gonna do. Most of us have got a garage space or a tool shed where we want to get the stuff organized. And I've got one of the simplest, affordable ways that you can use as a tool rack. And that's not only for your spades, it's for your forks, it's for your hand trowels, everything like that. So let's take a look at what I've got here. Number one, nice piece of timber. These are all standard sizes, so please don't stress. One, two of those, okay? So that's gonna be the top of my tool rack. This is going to be the base of my tool rack. And this over here is standard shelving timber. This is 100, all right? And then this guy over here is 70. So you know what? Don't get wound up about thicknesses and sizes. You will see it. When you see it at the shop, you will know that what you've got to use. And of course, your length, is all dependent on the space that you've got. And that, of course, you're gonna measure before you go. Remember, measure three times, cut once. Guys, so this is really simple. We've got four pieces of wood that's going to form part of the foot, but now I want to form the main part of the foot, which is gonna hold all our tools in place so that they're not on the ground. So first up, we're just gonna take this piece of plank that is literally 100 mils, pop it on top here, on top of our base, and we're just gonna tack it in. And I'm using a full thread cut screw. Take, take a look at this, this guy's so cool, which means I don't have to drill any pilot holes. Just go bang, straight into the wood. Right guys, nice and simple. Let's take a look. There is our foot, pretty simple. Now the next thing that you need to do is get a bit of PVC piping. And um, this is the thin guy get the smaller one, 55, and the big one, the 110. And all I've done is cut a few pieces like this. And we've put it at an angle because this is gonna hold the bottom of the tool, you know, to stop it from falling out, keeping it neat and tidy. And these just cut with a hacksaw, and we've done a 45 so you can get the screw back inside there. But we're gonna need probably about three or four of these, and that really is a simple process. Okay, next up, let's go to where we're gonna put it all together. Right guys, top beam, perfectly level, check. Next thing, clamp on that side, clamp on that side. Now because we've got two wooden beams, it makes it much, much easier in terms of attaching. And we're simply gonna use a tech screw to pop it in there. They like do their own thing. You don't need pilot holes or anything like that, brilliant. If it's a standard garage and you're putting into the wall, then you're gonna need one of those guys with the plugs that's called a nail in. Okay guys, so this is an awesome little gadget and this makes life so much easier. Why? Because it's got a nut on the top and not like one of those little star indentations. When you buy them, you get this little adapter here, which it goes onto. So there is no way of stripping it, which for me is kind of like not a permanent DIYer, this makes sense. It's also got this sharp little gadget on the end here, so it goes into the wood and penetrates really quickly. And I'm using this big boy, which is 110, and he's gonna go into here and attach it to the pole. All right, folks, both clamps are off. Next thing is to put the foot plate on, which is where our tools are gonna to rest, and we follow exactly the same procedure. Clamping, getting level, drilling it in. So folks, to make your life easier, all I've done is on the little pieces of PVC piping that I cut is simply to drill a pilot hole straight through so when you've got to attach it, it makes life a whole lot simpler. 
All right, guys, so I've got all my gizmos and gadgets together, my tools ready, and now all I have to do is simply take the tools and work out the spacing of the allocated ones that I want across this area. So for guys like this, I'll be using one of these cute little clamps. So we'll be attaching it there and it just pops on like that. Perfect. And then for other guys that don't have a big handle at the end, we're gonna put our little cut PVC piping at the bottom and that's gonna stop them from moving. <laughs> Right, fork is in, and folks, from a safety aspect, make the fork point inwards, please, not outwards, okay? Somebody could impale themselves. Now, my main tools are up, the larger tools. What's left are just my hand tools, and what we're gonna be using here is a little square cup hook, and they are literally gonna get popped along here. Always leave space for more, because everybody needs more gardening tools. And to get that process started, I'm simply gonna drill a few pilot holes in here, pop, the couple can, and away we go. Well, there you have it, folks. Everything looking neat and tidy. We know where everything is. For final bits, I want to put a piece of timber just across the bottom for safety, which what it does is it stops these tools. If anybody should be in here, it stops that literally just stops them from being pulled out. And that is just one extra added bit. Well, there you have it, folks. Garden tool organizer, done. I am so chuffed, everything is in place, looks gorgeous, and you will never have to look for anything again. Remember, I have left a lip at the bottom here, and that's so that if you want to sweep, get underneath there, clean it all out, and of course, just looks better as well. I hope you enjoyed it.